Hello, everyone. Welcome to this edition of our happy hour called Island Life. It's an exciting one today because we're doing something totally different. And uh, I know it's already uh, on the hour, but we're gonna give it another minute or so because we had so many people register. And today was the Baxter Media Awards. So I know people were very busy. So we'll just give it a minute um, before uh, we get going. But as you can see, if you've been on some of our happy hours in the past, then you know I'm in a different spot. I normally am either with a beautiful photograph or a picture painting behind me, or I'm in my office with the blue wall. But today I'm inviting you into my kitchen, which I'm super excited about, a little nervous about, but very, very excited um, to have you. And as people start coming in, let's go over some of the housekeeping stuff that we always go over. Number one, there is a chat and I can already see that people are writing in the chat and I, I won't probably see the chats until towards the end, but please, I will get a chance to go there. So that's a great place to put comments, to say hello, tell me what beverage you're drinking if you're joining me for this happy hour. Hour and, uh, and and just you know ask any questions that you might have about um, Anderson vacations island life that kind of thing the numbers keep rolling up this is so so exciting uh, I do have some special guests with me today um, before I introduce them though I am going to do a few thank yous of course to you to those regular people who keep coming for our happy hours this is number 13 I believe this is our second Vancouver Island um, happy hour. The first happy hour we ever did was actually on Vancouver Island and it was so well received um, that and people kept asking about it and I started doing it as a presentation for agencies with their consumers and, and I could just sense that people were really excited about Vancouver Island. And right now we've got this incredible new program I'm gonna share with you in a few minutes. So let's get started and talk about a, th a few things like that. So thank you for, to all of you for joining today. Thank you for the regulars for coming. Um, to Pip, who is our marketing manager, who puts together all these PowerPoints for us and um, the videos that you're going to see today. I really couldn't do it without Pip. She's amazing. And we are doing a completely different format, like I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a lot of video footage in here. So a couple things. There might be some lag. Um, and if you have any problem with the videos, don't worry. We're going to send you the recording afterwards. You can watch it again. Um, but please note, the videos were taken either by myself, by my friend Jenny from Personal Travel Management. Shout out to you, Jenny. Thank you so much. And to my husband, Poncho. He came along on this journey. We actually did this, um, this happy hour ourselves traveling um, down island towards Victoria. I'm currently in Nanaimo and did some really fun video recordings for you to enjoy today. And don't forget that there are questions at the end so you can win a prize. Um, and there is also going to be a little cooking lesson at the end as well. So like I said, we're doing this completely different than we ever have before. And we're really excited to get started. So if I can have Nicole and Darcy turn on their cameras for a minute, that would be great. Hi guys, so great to have you. So let me get my card here. So on the top, we have Darcy Bachelor. She's with Travel Trade. Uh, she's the Travel Trade and Media Manager for Tourism Vancouver Island. Thanks for joining us, Darcy. If it wasn't for you, I couldn't have done my trip on the island. Um, you supported me um, to help me with my hotel and the arrangements, and I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. No problem. Thanks so much for inviting me on the webinar today and, and the happy hour. It's uh, always such a pleasure working with Anderson Vacations, and I'm so excited that everybody gets to see uh, the beautiful place that both you and I get to call home, and Nicole, of course and uh, see it through your eyes. It's gonna be a really great um, couple happy hours. Awesome, thanks so much. And we have my good friend, Nicole Yamamoto, and she is the Sales and Market Development Specialist at Destination Greater Victoria. Hi, Nicole. Hello, thanks so much for inviting me, you guys. I just want to say hello, introduce myself. Uh, yeah, Nicole with Destination Greater Victoria. I don't know about you guys, but I am extremely excited for today. What Darcy's going to show you truly is island life. It's something we live all the time. They could be done as like everything you see or do could be done as day trips from Victoria or Nanaimo. You can overnight. Just absolutely beautiful. And uh, even if you don't live very far away in Vancouver or close by, uh, trust me, you've got to come over and experience island life. Um, I grew up in Richmond, so I can tell you it's a stark difference and you got to come. 
Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Darcy. Thanks for joining me. And I hope you stick around to watch the next half hour or so of our, our happy hour. Now, I got to tell all the people who've joined us today, something really amazing and exciting happened. Uh, today was the Baxter Media Awards and uh, Anderson Vacations was nominated in three different categories. And we actually came in fourth in um, the category of the North American Tour Operator, the Best North American Tour Operator. We came in fourth. Um, last year, we were ninth. So that means that you guys are seeing the value in what Anderson Vacations does. And we are absolutely so thrilled and so proud of how far we've come, even in the last year, with everything going on and having all of you so engaged with us. And we're all in this ride together. So uh, we're just absolutely thrilled by that. So let's get started. Uh, housekeeping again, there's a chat. So please put your notes in the chat. I'll be sure to get to those at the end. Watch for the um, questions at the end. So pay attention. I'll try and drop some hints to you. And the most important thing is we want to have fun. The videos that we have taken are absolutely not professional quality. They were taken with my cell phone, my friend's cell phone, and my husband's. So you're going to hear some wind you're going to hear, um, sometimes the sound is not perfect. So if you can't hear me, I apologize. Turn up your volume on your laptop or whatever you're using right now. Turn it up as loud as you can. And then um, listen carefully. Again, we're going to send it out to you afterwards so you can hear it again. But sometimes just seeing the pictures will be enough for you. So let's get started. Okay, so most of you know me. I'm Darcy Guarderas, and I'm the Director of Business Development for Anderson Vacations. In my previous life, I was a travel agent, so I can completely relate to what you guys are going through. Well, maybe not quite as what you're going through right now, but I definitely am here for you as we move forward and we start to see some light. Um, I've been really fortunate to travel extensively around Canada. I love all of it. My heart is in Vancouver Island because this is where I am now. And uh, I live in Nanaimo. And I just really wanted to share not the whole experience, um, every single destination, or every single attraction, just really delve into like four or five so that you could really feel it. I want you to walk away at the end of today saying, I felt like I visited Vancouver Island. Or maybe you'll feel like, I want to go there. I want to do that with you. Or you can share that information with your clients and really paint a broad, beautiful picture of what a wonderful um, destination the island is. And we're only going to focus on a small part of it today. Um, of course, it's happy hour. So I was visiting Mary Dale Cidery on this tour. And you'll see a bit more about that. So I actually have two to choose from, from Mary Dale. One is the traditional and the other is apple pie. So I've decided, I was thinking, I was going back and forth. I've decided to go with apple pie today, which is a lovely cider. I didn't actually try this one when I was at Marydale. I did try some fabulous ciders, one of which actually had lime and tequila in it. It was amazing. So I'll give it a go. Oh my goodness. It's definitely tastes like dessert. Wow. Amazing. So let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to leave these photos in. We had these in our last presentation. This is a great um, imagery of the feeling you get on the island, being out with the wide open spaces, nature, and that's what clients are looking for. And pretty much every province can get into BC now, which is great. And we are taking bookings mostly to BC. So we welcome your guests as they get more comfortable with flying. I did fly again this week. I've been on my 10th commercial flight in the last month and I felt even more comfortable. It's about getting your clients comfortable with that as well. People did wear masks, they did sanitize, I felt completely um, safe the entire time, and I felt this incredible sense of freedom getting on the plane. So if you haven't done it yourselves, get out there, because once you do it, you can tell your clients confidently that, um, that they should be you know, thinking about traveling within Canada as well. Here's a little bit of the map of Vancouver Island. It's like 460 kilometers long and about 100 kilometers wide, but we're just focusing on some really great experiential things um, in the south part of the island. So we're going to start in Souk and then we're going to head up. We actually don't spend any time in Victoria, believe it or not, although I'm going to talk a bit about Victoria and the long stay programs. And then we head all the way up um, with a little surprise sort of at the end. Okay, so the whole thing that really got us going on this is we know that your clients who normally would go to say Mexico, Arizona, Florida, different places like that for the winter um, are now looking for something a little bit different, not so far away. They can't travel that far. Maybe they don't want to deal with quarantining when they come back. So we're very aware that uh, Victoria is a great destination for your clients to do a long stay program. And we have several 
um, hotels there and we create a beautiful little package. Um, and then we also have, believe it or not, we've got a, a long stay in Souk. And Souk is where I'm, I did some sea kayaking that you're going to see momentarily. Um, and then also in Parksville, which is actually more up island, closer to Nanaimo. It's probably about 25 minutes, 30 minutes from Nanaimo. Um, north of here and it's a great little community and the accommodation that we use there is super centrally located so they can walk everywhere and it's safe and and there's lots of things to do around there all the next things i'm going to talk about on this happy hour the activities can be done from any one of these locations and we can do it as a self-drive package too with a car rental accommodation and at least one attraction included in the packages. And if you want these flat sheets so you can send them to your clients customized, um, we can do that. We can put your contact details and your logo on there and you can send it out to your clients to an e-blast or use it on social media, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, so this is the beginning. So Souk is this, oh, if you've got clients who really want nature and hiking, um, Port Renfrew is not too far away where they can have, there's incredible hiking trails all around Souk. And one of the experiences that I love so much, you're gonna get a taste of momentarily, is um, sea kayaking. And this is a really unique way to sea kayak. So turn your volume up, listen carefully. You might get to see some seals. Don't blink, you might miss it. Here we go. just left Souk Harbor and we're out here with West Coast Outdoor Adventures. So we're on kayaks and as you can see I'm not paddling, I'm pedaling which is a really unique way to explore the harbor and we're going to head out this way where we've been told the salmon are jumping. So we'll see if we can get a shot of that for you. So, not only am I outside enjoying the great wide open spaces, but I'm getting a little bit of exercise too, which is fantastic. And there happens to be a seal that's following us along our way. As you can see, there's two, a mama and a baby. If you look behind Poncho's kayak, you might be able to see the salmon jumping. There's a fisherman here and I don't want to make too much noise. <gasps> there we go! So we're just heading out to the pass and we're passing through a bunch of kelp, different kinds of kelp. Um, you can actually do a seaweed tour here. We can do tastings and learn all about the seaweed. Um, there's actually bull kelp around here, which are really large and they're one of the fastest growing plants. They grow several feet per day. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the kelp below. So when you're in your pedal kayak, you just have to be a little bit aware of it, but um, it's no problem. Columbia, our own backyard. So get your clients to open their minds to exploring beautiful BC and the rest of Canada, looking for those wide open spaces and enjoy nature at its best. The final leg of our sea kayak, which ended in a race, and I won. And there's a seal just straight ahead that just pops under the water. Perfect end to a perfect day. Okay, so that gave you a little taste of sea kayaking. And have you ever seen anything like that? So I wasn't using my arms clearly. I was using my, uh, my legs to pedal. And it's great for all ages. So whether it's kids, even as young as like six, seven years old, 
fantastic. So great for families. Um, so if you want to put together like a little bubble of people, family, um, multi-generation can go. And up to, they had someone as old as in their 90s, like 93 years old, doing um, the sea kayak tour. And it was just amazing. You can see the weather changed as we went through. We spent a couple of hours out in the water and it's not expensive. The owner of the company, um, West Coast Outdoor Adventure, I, I spent a good amount of time with him talking and he had to pivot during this time during COVID. And, you know, he had to get rid of some of his employees and he had to really work hard. He's working, you know, 12 hours, 14 hour days, but he did everything he could. And he had a really great season. It was just so heartwarming to, to spend some time and talk to him about it actually being success this season, um, all things considered. Now I was standing on the dock um, just after we were sea kayaking. Let me just find my arrow here. This is just a short clip, but I want to show you what you can see right off the dock. So it's just a few seconds, but let's see if I can get this going. Just off the dock, absolutely beautiful. And then here, lucky, this crab. That's right off the dock. That is a large crab. I was yelling at him, get in my belly. I was so excited to see him because you don't usually see them in that close, but there are crab traps all over the place out in the harbor as well. Okay, so from there, we headed up island a little bit to a place called Avril Creek. Now, I love going to wineries. Um, even if you're not a big wine drinker, the experience itself is so lovely. Um, I'm going to show you a video on this one. What's really interesting about Avril um, Creek Vineyard uh, is that the way the buildings are set up, they have these three buildings that are all kind of tiered, and it's on purpose. So that gravity pulls the wine down through the different processes. When it gets to the bottom, it's not, it doesn't change the flavor or anything by using pump they actually use natural gravity um, to pull the, the, the wine through the processes. So it's really a soft, lovely wine, and they have all different kinds. Of, see that Jus wine in the picture? There might just be a bottle of that in the prize pack at the end. So this was the charcuterie board that we enjoyed. So I'm going to show you another quick video here. Welcome to Avril Creek, one of three wineries that we'll be visiting on our tour of Vancouver Island today. This is one of my favorites because you can have a lovely bottle of wine like Jus that we're enjoying today. They'll create a charcuterie board just for you, or you can actually bring your own picnic and enjoy these glorious gardens with wonderful views of the vineyards and the ocean. Cheers. We're still here at Avril Creek and I wanted to give you just a little glimpse of the spectacular gardens that make this place so special. So it's not just the wine and the picnics, it's also these lovely gardens and the atmosphere that keep bringing us back to Avril Creek. <laughs> So you can do a wine tasting or you can purchase a bottle. Uh, we actually just had a bottle. And I should say in this video, I said we're going to visit three wineries in this one day. We did two wineries and a cidery. I couldn't do any more. I was a bit smashed. So we had to wait. So we've only got two wineries and one, and one cidery for you to experience. But it's just absolutely lovely. And I was, I'm whispering a bit because it was quite crowded. It's a little bit busy, but all of these businesses are following COVID safety practices. So you can be completely comfortable visiting or having your clients visit it as well and um, I was doing these videos and uh, some young girls I've overheard my my husband overheard them saying I think she's an influencer which I thought was just hysterical because that's not the case give me one sec here. okay the next stop we went to if you've been on these before you know how I, I feel about blue grouse um, this is absolutely again one of my favorites it's I love this photograph because you get the feel of how modern this is again you're gonna I talk quite quietly because there's quite a few people around but you'll get a view of the vineyards and really see um, how beautiful this is the the wines are great. One of my favorites that they have is their Quill series. They have both white and red. Really soft. You can drink uh, quite a bit without even having a headache. It's just so lovely. Um, but the one that I'm actually using today in the recipe is an Ortega from Blue Grouse. And it's, oh, it's so beautiful. Welcome to Blue Grouse, another one of my favorite uh, vineyards on Vancouver Island. We're going to be doing a tasting. This is 65 acres of 
incredible land. Um, the wines are fantastic, and we'll hear a little bit more about those in a minute. But what's really great about bluegrass is just the philosophy of stewardship. They want to leave everything better than what they found it. So you get this really great feeling of family. I love coming here and doing the tastings because the people are so warm and welcoming, and the facilities are gorgeous. So this is a, a must-stop when you're touring Vancouver Island. Standing amongst the vines at Blue Grouse, uh, we were just told that they're working on their certification for organic grapes, which is fantastic. We finished our wine tasting, which was amazing, and I'm definitely walking away with at least a couple of bottles from Blue Grouse. Cheers. That wasn't a lie. I did buy two bottles, in fact, and I am using one of them today. But a great stop. And I should mention to you, I should tell you, Souk, where we did the kayaking, is about um, 45 minutes outside of Victoria. And then um, Avril Creek is about an hour, and Blue Grouse is about 50 minutes. So all within like an hour of Victoria, so easy access. So if your clients have a rental car, you can get them just a small little car. They could do it for their entire duration that they're safe, they stay for a long stay, or they could do it for a couple of days here and there. If they wanted to just take a little day trip, um, this is perfect for those day trips. Okay, so then we went to Marydale Cider. So now picture this, so I've been to two wineries, had a bottle, a half a bottle, and then did some tasting. So now we're at Marydale Cidery, and um, Nicole was lovely enough to warn me. She said, be careful, they're strong. Some of them are as high as 11%. Um, there's a video in here, it's really quick, moves really quick, and I'm sorry for that. It wasn't the best quality video of the actual um, the space, but it, I put it in anyway because it gives you an idea. The apples were fully like ripe and ready to go. So as you walk through, you could smell the apples um, and you just wanted to pick them, but you can't pick them because they use every single apple. And in their ciders, there, it's un, undist uh, undiluted um, apple juice that they use in their ciders and it's a distillery so they do um, gins and vodkas and all kinds of things. We opted to do a cider tasting here. There actually was a small wedding going on and um, my husband said to me why have we never been here before? Now I have been but he has not so he was really really um, impressed by, by this spot. <laughs> So here we are at Marydale Cidery, and we're here to taste, of course, some ciders. And so from left to right, we're going driest to sweetest. This is a small tasting flight, and shortly after we taste all of these lovely ciders, my very favorite chicken pot pie will be coming out soon. So you can see how lovely it is and you can see while well, it's um, still here all of the Adirondack chairs are all spread apart so again very COVID safe when we went inside the restaurant they were very careful about that um, it was the service was was really good you can walk you can't pick the apples we can walk all through the orchard and again smell those apples and it's just that wonderful feeling of fall um, the trees you know a week later were starting to, to change it was really really lovely um, I think there's a picture here. So I did get my chicken pot pie. And if you're going there, you have to have it. They bring this pastry. They have pastry chefs that make the best pastry on chicken pot pie ever. And I was so excited to enjoy this. It was a perfect, perfect uh, spot for lunch. Now, you might have heard me talk about this place before too, West Home Tea Farm. They've made some changes. They used to be um, have tea um, experiences where you'd go in and sit and actually um, have you know a tea experience where you taste it and sample and so on. Um, due to COVID, they have actually shifted slightly and it's turned out to be really great for them. They're really focused on what they do the very best and that is provide these incredible tea, um, different kinds of tea from around the world. And you'll see that in the video, but this gives some great shots. That's myself and my daughter down in the bottom left and a few shots of the um, ceramics that Margaret, the owner, does do. Uh, really, really special place. And they do, uh, I won't tell you too much, you'll get to see the video. I don't want to spoil it for you. Hello, Tea Geeks. You are at the right place. We are currently at West Home Tea Farm. And if you've been to one of my happy hours, you know how much I love this place. You can come here to... Um, purchase teas, uh, 
there's over 100 organic blends from around the world. And actually what they do at the tea farm here is they make the blends themselves. So when you come in here to purchase tea, they don't want you to just pick um, your favorite tea every single time. They're going to counsel you on different teas and the different blends that they create themselves. But something that's really special here at West Home Tea Farm as well is the fact that they have been growing their own tea since 2010, which is really unique because they are the first and only commercial tea growers in all of Canada. So it's very, very special. I'm going to take you on a little tour inside. Now that you've been inside the tea farm and had a chance to look at all of the beautiful ceramics that are hand built by Margit, the owner of the West Home Tea Farm, uh, she and her husband came from Denmark and they um, built this farm. It, it was actually in a previous life, a cow barn. And now it is a beautiful art gallery with wonderful ceramics um, that you can purchase, which also enhance the tea experience. And right behind me, you can see some of the actual tea that has been grown um, on the farm and inside our gift basket today there will be a featured tea called Cowichan Breakfast and that is a special blend that was made up uh, by hand by Margaret and her team that is um, absolutely unique and special and uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. Okay so don't forget to pay attention because we've got um, some questions at the end and there's a chance to win that tea and maybe something to drink as well. Now, the next stop as we're driving along, again, uh, uh, with, with a, a rental car, they can do this or it can be part of a self-drive holiday. If they're not staying in a long state, if they only want to come for a week or two, um, they can be doing uh, a self-drive starting in Victoria and heading all the way up the island. So this is one of the stops along the way. Uh, you can see the beautiful mural behind me here. Welcome to Shemanus. This is the town of Murals. Shemanus is uh, a used to be a logging community, but now it's famous for its 53 murals. This is one of my favorite stops for self drives in Canada on Vancouver Island. And so you can either walk through town or drive slowly by and see all of this incredible artistry um, here for you to enjoy. This is one of my favorite stops. It really is because you can spend a, quite a bit of time here walking around and Duncan is not too far away. So the totem poles, I didn't have a chance to stop there, but you can also stop and see the totem poles. And there's over 40 totem poles in Duncan, which is not too far away, like I mentioned. And it's really interesting to see the history and the First Nations culture, which is really um, strong on the island as well. Okay, so now this is our final segment. I know we're getting towards the end of it before we start our cooking class. Um, and then the questions are going to be after the cooking class. So um, I'm going to take you clam digging. Uh, I talk about this all the time. And you know what? Um, in this world with all these stresses that we're going through, I think we each have to find that thing that makes us happy, whether it's reading a book or exercising or what it is to you know, keep you happy. And my happy place really is clam digging. And anyone who comes to the island can just do this. All you gotta do is hit the dollar store and pick up a few supplies and you can um, enjoy this. Um, if you're coming to the island, you let me know and I will personally take you. So I'm gonna take you on a short little journey of this uh, right now. Welcome to Nanus Bay. So I'm taking you on a journey to go clam digging because that's one of my favorite things. I do it maybe once a week, every two weeks or so. Um, I come down to Nanus Bay where it's peaceful, where I can disconnect and I can find wide open spaces that I love to talk about. So first of all, um, the most important thing for clam digging is having the right tools. So normally I would be wearing rubber boots, but my friend behind me, the, the camera is wearing rubber my rubber boots today. So I'm wearing running shoes. I do have with me um, a little shovel. Some people use a rake. I prefer a little shovel. And I even dig with my hands a little bit as well. Of course, you have to have a bucket and I like mine to match my jacket. So I've got my bucket. And then for the end, I have this little strainer to clean them in the ocean. So I'm going to take you clamming in just a couple of minutes. But first, you're going to have a little view of where we are. Okay, so here we are. We're actually clamming on the beach. So as you can see, I've got a few clams in my bucket already. 
So there's a couple of strategies that I like to use. One is I like to look for sort of the air holes or the water spouting out of the sand. But the other technique that seems to work better for me is to find a pile of rocks. So for example, right here, we'll find a little pile of rocks. I always think that people are a little bit lazy and if they have to move stuff, they're not gonna dig there. So I tend to find larger clams around rocks. So this is a pile that I've just started digging in. So let's see what we can find. I like to move the rocks out of the way and dig down. Oh, there we go. Dig down a bit. Oh, we got a big one off the hop. Right off the hop, we got a good size. Oh, there's two right here. So that is about the smallest size that I would go with. This is the ones that make me really excited, this size here. And these are manila clams um, that you can find just about anywhere along the beach. Sometimes it takes a little bit of patience and sometimes you get lucky and just find a little gold mine full of clams. So, so far we're having a great day and we've had nothing but great luck. So I'm super excited because I just found a jackpot. Um, so I started thinking here is kind of a really rocky area, like lots and lots of rocks, more than before. And so as I started to go in here, they just started to come like giant. They're, these are the biggest ones. So in the last minute or two, I found all of these. Oh, oh, which are really, really large. That's a that's probably the biggest ones I've found. They're really heavy actually because there's lots of meat inside of them. So those are great. And this is definitely the jackpot. Oh, there's another one. Very exciting. Okay, now we've got our clams and we're gonna head back home fairly soon so we can cook these up. But first I'm gonna wash them off. So I like to bring this colander that I showed you before. And now we'll just put them in the water like this. Put that around a bit. And voila, you have perfectly clean clams that you can take home. They'll last, um, you put them actually back in the bucket with salt water and they'll last overnight. So you don't have to cook them tonight. You can actually cook them tomorrow. But when I get home and I have the um, clams in the salt water, I actually put a little bit of flour in the water. So the clams will bring the flour in and they'll expel any of the sand that they might have picked up on the beach. Um, and so they're not gritty when you eat them. Okay, so who wants to go clam digging with me? Tons of fun. So, okay, so I'm going to do something different now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so if you can see me, that's great. Um, we're going to get started. So I can't see the screen very well, so I'll, hopefully we can get this going so you can see what I'm doing. So first of all, welcome to my kitchen. Here we are in Nanaimo, British Columbia, and I'm actually in my kitchen. And the first thing I always do before I start to cook is I pour myself a lovely glass of wine. And I mentioned earlier, this is an Ortega from Blue Grouse. So let's get started with that. Take a little top off that and then get started. And we happen to be using this in our clams as well. So what I'm doing for you today is those clams that we just went clam digging for, I'm gonna show you my absolute favorite recipe. And at the end of the webinar, you're gonna see um, the the recipe on your screen and we're going to send it out to you as well. So let's get started. I'm going to move this down this way so you can see what I am doing. Got it. Okay, so first of all, the first thing I do is I get a nice little bowl like this and I throw in the wine, which in this case, of course, it's a white. I'm using the Blue Grouse Ortega and I add a half a cup of wine into the uh, bowl like that. And then we use a lime. So I like to use, of course, fresh lime. I never use lime juice out of one of those squeezy things because fresh lime juice makes all the difference. So um, this is a, an amazing tool. I got this at Coombs on Vancouver Island for like three bucks and it's perfect and all it does is help you squeeze all the juice out of the lime. So hopefully you can see that right there. So I do both halves of the lime like this nice and citrusy and the lime with the white wine together just makes the absolute perfect combination. And then I add a little bit of garlic. Um, so I'm a garlic press snob. If you can see this one, if you're looking for like the best garlic press in the whole entire world, Ikea, $9, the best garlic press ever. Because you don't even have to take the skin off of the garlic. You just stick it in like that, push it down, and check it out. It comes out because it's got laser cut holes in it. It's super, super swift. We add that to the bowl. Let's add a little bit more of that garlic in there. I like spice. So I'm gonna add a little bit of chili flakes to mine. I actually add a lot of chili flakes. Depends on your taste, what you like to do. And then about two teaspoons of olive oil, just a little bit like that, like that, couple teaspoons of olive oil. 
And then some people don't like cilantro. I love cilantro. If you're not a cilantro fan, that's okay. You can use maybe parsley or you can skip it all together. It's optional. But if you like cilantro, you are going to love this. And all I do is I cut off just a little handful of it like that. And I just chop it up nice, not, not too fine, like this. That's probably enough. And then I just chop it up. I'm a really messy cooker, but that's okay because my husband's amazing at doing the dishes afterwards and cleaning up after me. So we make an awesome team. Chop it up roughly, throw that into the bowl if you can see that. And what else have we got? Salt and pepper. As much salt as you like. I like it fairly salty. A little bit of pepper like that. And then you mix that up like this, like so. And you can adjust those amounts depending on how many you're making. I'm doing three pounds of clams today. So I do that. And then all you need is a little spoon. Now I'm gonna show you a clam um, before uh, you cook it. So first of all, this is the clam when you get it um, from the ocean. I showed you earlier in the video. This clam, I actually steam it or boil it for just a few minutes and it will actually pop open. And the moment that it pops open, I stop cooking it. And then what I have is a clam with a shell, let me just show you, kind of like this together that pops open. I break the top off like that, and now you have the clam sitting in the, in the shell. Then I would take this mixture, just take a little teaspoonful and top it into the clam. It seems a little bit tedious, but it's so worth it. And there's this amazing tray, I'll just show you, give me one quick second, I'm gonna adjust the uh, screen again so you can see me. So now that we've got that made, there's these trays you can buy. You can get them at HomeSense or wherever, like seven, eight dollars. This is the best thing ever. I bought two of them so you can see through them and they're perfect to place your clams on. So what I would do is then place my clams on there and I would normally do it on um, a charcoal grill um, outside, but because um, we're inside today, I actually did them in the oven. So this is the tray and it would be loaded with clams. So let me quickly show you what we've got. They're in the oven, all ready to go. Just pull them out. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Here we go. You can see what I've done. So they will be, if you can see this or not, hang on, let me just turn the screen down a bit. So you can see it. You can see how lovely they are. So um, these ones have been in there for a little bit longer than normal because I was doing the presentation, but nice and bubbly and warm. And then, oh yeah, let me get rid of that and show you the actual clam. And I like to get a nice crusty um, baguette and a nice crisp white. So you have one of these and one of these and, oh my gosh, absolutely the best. And the best part of it is you dig for the clams yourself. So there's absolutely no expense. Normally when I buy um, clam, go clam digging, uh, if I compare what to what it costs in the store, on average, it's about $100 worth of clams each time I do the clam digging. So it's just amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Now let me go back to my screen sharing for one quick second, and I will show you some of the questions. Here we go. Let's jump to our next one. Okay, so there's a recipe so you can take a look at it. You can see them on the barbecue. That's actually on our grill. And this recipe will be emailed out to you. So if you, if you try it, please let me know if you like it. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. Here are your questions. So take a look at these, please, and um, make a note of these. Uh, if you'd like, I'll leave this on here for a couple of seconds. I'm super excited for you to join here. And while you're looking at the questions, I'm gonna look at, um, at questions from you guys and comments from you guys. And I'll answer any of those questions that there might be there. Here's a question. Thanks, Karen, I hope you enjoyed. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, great idea. Um, Pip's saying if you want to take a uh, picture of the questions so you have more time, that's great. And I see a few people are wanting to come with me uh, clam digging, you are absolutely invited. You just let me know when you're coming to the island and I will make sure. Um, no clams in Nebraska, Jim, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can find any questions at all. Okay, yes, you can do a two center vacation, Ruth. Definitely, you can do to Victoria. And we can definitely work on some Tofino properties as well. So we can put together a two center holiday. That's a great idea. You can even do a three center holiday if you like. Um, sometimes you get better rates on hotels if you stay longer. Um, someone else was on in Souk. Diane, you were in Souk on Tuesday. Fantastic. 
Uh, let's see here. Any other questions? Hello to everyone. Thank you for all your lovely comments. That's so nice. Fantastic. And so for some of you who might not have had clams before, they're not um, really strong, actually, if you're not a seafood person. I've had people say that um, they they wouldn't, uh, they hadn't had them before, or they didn't like them, but then once they've tried these, they, they really do um, enjoy them. So I think we've got the questions. If you've taken a picture, you've taken a look at them. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Darcy and to Nicole for joining me today. And to all of you for taking time to join me on this. It was kind of a bit of an experiment. We wanted to do something different and show you what it's really like to be on the island um, and to share these experiences with your clients for long stay options. So please reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, I, I, I really appreciate your time. I think I might have one more slide. Let's just make sure I'm not missing anything. And if, if I don't, if I miss any of your questions, please um, email me at dguarderas at andersonvacations.ca. Visit our website um, at Anderson vacations.ca if you haven't signed up already for our uh, agent portal you'll get all kinds of updates and if you want some flat sheets to send to your clients please let us know once again i thank you for joining us today on this very unique presentation we look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks have a lovely weekend just around the corner bye everyone <music>